Can't see every single possibility. Mm -hmm. And someday I know it'll all turn out. I work to work it out. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. I hope you are doing absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, my ear. Hello, Jonathan. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. I hope you are having an amazing weekend. Hello, Mark. How are you, dearest? It's a gorgeous day here in Southern California. I don't know wherever you are. I hope you are having hello. Thank you, heart, to you as well. Well, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. How is life treating you? How is life treating you all? Well, for those of you who do not know me, by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and Heal Talk Tuesdays are talking about health, vitality, inspiration, motivation, things that are happening in my life, in your life. So it's an open conversation that we can talk about anything. So I was going to ask you, what's happening in your life? Hello, Claudia. How are you? What's going on in your life? What's happening? Hey, tomorrow is Halloween. You're doing good. Thank you. Wonderful, Mark. And how's your lovely wife? Um, tomorrow is Halloween. I wonder, are you going to dress up? Frankly, Halloween is not one of my favorites. Uh, my front desk receptionist, when she comes in, she, since a week ago, she was all excited to dress up like a cat or a cat woman. And she asked me if I'm going to be dressing up. And I'm like, no. My favorite uh, time of the year is Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I love giving thanks. I love the time of just family coming together. Since I was a kid, I was never into Halloween. I don't know. Maybe I got scared or something. For those of you who don't know, I was born in Iran. And I've been here since elementary. So this is my country. I love here. But in Iran, they have something similar to Halloween. Um, it's not dressing up, but what they do in that country is they put the chadors on. Uh, I don't know what they call it over here. Uh, yeah. Uh, they put the black chadors on men, boys and girls, not men, boys and girls. And then they go from home to home and they used to carry a metal, like a pan or a pot and then they would take their spoon and they would go banging they would go banging from door to door and they would have a sack or a plastic bag and the people who would open the door they would give them candy or a gift mostly candy just like here but there it was we called it koshok zani koshok is spoon zani is banging so they would go banging on the pan and the spoon. And that's how people would know that there was someone at the door and they would open and gift it. Now in here, it's a whole different thing. Of course, where I live, it's, it's like, it's a, a whole entertainment industry in Los Angeles. So there's homes that truly decorate. And 
there's parties. I'm sure this weekend was a lot of parties. This coming weekend will be a lot of parties. So I want to know, do you party? Do you dress up fully? And uh, why am I bringing this up? Because I think it's that one time in the year that people just go out of their box and can dress up anything and become anything they want to. It's just like giving themselves permission to be anything and create, become extravagant, and, and it's okay. So I truly believe there is a lot of people who wear masks, different masks, and we do. We wear a mask when we want to meet someone on a first date. We have this mask or this front when we are going for a job interview. We have a mask with our parents. We have a mask with our lover, husband, wife, whatever it is. So I think a lot of us wear different masks. Um, it's rare to find someone who is just pure authentic themselves. I mean, authenticity is great, but we all have a front. And why do we create fronts? I know in the line of work that I do, when my clients come to me, and through hypnosis, through coaching, through talking, um, even when I do stress management in companies and organizations, through all this coaching and talking, what we do here in my office is peel away, peel away layers that we have put on ourselves. Layers that has been there for protecting ourselves. And we come to protect ourselves and shield ourselves, either physically, mentally, or emotionally. But it's usually protecting our body. We gain the weight. That's another layer. It's masking the inner self. Um, of course, the best mask that we wear every single day is for women is their makeup and the clothes that we wear. Men and women, they do that. So with that, there's also layers of protection from hurt, being hurt, um, being bullied, and being downplayed. So it affects our self-esteem. And I think that is one of the reasons that Halloween is so wonderful for those who love love, love, love to dress up is they, they don't need to have a front. Uh, they, there is no protection. Everything is behind this beautiful costume that they wear. And every year we can change costumes. Every day, different parties, we can have a different costume. A friend of mine would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and put a makeup on before she went to work. So to her, this was the most beautiful thing that she could do. Of course, she loves makeup. And as you can see, I don't do much makeup. Uh, just enough, right? Enough for work, enough for party. But back to our masks and layers of protection. What are we truly protecting? Who are we protecting ourselves from? And my clients who come here for self-esteem issues or for weight issues, and they come here saying, I, I am, I can't even, I don't even know who I am anymore. And that is one of the most hurtful things I have heard because in my a part of my intake is asking questions. What's your best physical feature? What's your best attribute? And what is 
the best quality you have. And so many clients come here stomped as if no one has ever asked me those. I don't know the answers to these. So here's my question to you. Do you think about you? What is your best quality? Come on, put it out there. What is the best quality in your own mind? What are one of one or two of your best qualities? What's your best attribute? What, what do you love? Do you know how to be loved? Do you know what makes you happy? What would thrill you? What gives you a sense of thrill, a sense of joy? And when we think about those, it's like peeling away a mask that we have worn for so long to protect ourselves. You see, there is a part of us, the little girl, the little boy inside, that is either scared or it's not confident enough or it's been hurt so much and they have to protect themselves. But sometimes we have come to protect ourselves so much and have put so many layers that we are numb to who we are. We become numb to what we love. We become numb to what we like. It's as if someone else's likes, their love, their joy, their happiness, either the husband, the wife, the children, or even parents, is more important than we forget us. We forget the me. And I'm not saying be selfish or anything, but... How often do you sit and say, hmm, what is? If everything was taken away from me today, what would make me happy? And I'm not talking about loved ones, but things. Because things, really, this, this, or even all the things you see behind me. You know, um, it's just things. Uh, yes, some of them are gifts. Some of them I have accumulated. Some of them are perfect decor from my office for what I do. But when a client comes here and sits after they observe everything and they feel comfortable and they sink into the recliner, my first job is to make them comfortable with themselves so that they can relax within themselves. And that brings me to when I was talking about doing self-hypnosis for um, a pain or an itch that I had because of a bug bite, I had someone PM me and say, how do you do self-hypnosis? You know, self-hypnosis is truly going in within yourself. And I teach this. I teach my clients, every single client that comes here. It's not that I want you to depend on me to go into hypnosis. I teach self-hypnosis so that no matter where you are, uh, at home, at work, you can give yourself time out, seven minutes, 10 minutes, even four minute power self-hypnosis. And that re-energizes you or you just cut away and transmit whatever it is from here to another place as a power nap, but it becomes a self-hypnosis. And it's just like this. And I give you the tools, I guide you, you learn it, and you can use it. So if you want to know more about that, PM me, send me your email, and I will be more than happy to guide you and give you directions or do it over Skype and work with you and do a session. So if 
that is something, please, by all means, let me know. I'll be more than happy to share that information. Masks that we wear, at one time, it was placed by you for you. And it was placed there to protect you and safeguard you. And there comes a time that the masks that we placed upon ourselves no longer are necessary. They are no longer necessary. And those are the masks that we get to peel away, to just, like a curtain, just open it up. Because in order for us to have a transformation in anything, to transform to from where we are to another. If the business is bad, we want to make the business good. We have to do some hardcore changes. If the weight is in a place that it's no longer um, good for you, it's, uh, it's hindering you to do a lot of things that you want to feel better, you want to walk better, you want to go jogging, you want to dress the things that you want, the size, like two sizes, even smaller, then there is something that we need to do together. And it's not always diet. Sometimes it's that emotional weight that we hold on to. And that's another layer. What is that layer that we hold on to to protect ourselves? With that, I say, be comfortable with yourself. Become a more open and loving with yourself so that you can give yourself permission to let go of some of the masks, some of the layers. And it can be either or. You know, it reminds me of this. I was given this beautiful box. It's called a dream box. And it's got this beautiful lotus shape. Isn't that beautiful? And inside this box, it's a beautiful writing. That, that's all it is. It's just a box, piece of paper, and a writing. And it says, it's the legend of a dream box and what it is for. And here's my question. We can wish upon a star and put dreams in a box. But if we can just wish and put a dream, what good is that? If we put that lid in there and never look at it and never pick it up and say, this is what my dream is or was. It's just like, you see that little dream catcher? If you have masks, dream catchers, dream boxes, and things like that. Thank you, Mark. It is beautiful. If that dream catcher, once we make a dream, once we make a wish upon it, and if we're not keeping it alive, if we are not renewing our dream to see, did my dream become a reality? And how often do we think about our dream? It becomes a dust catcher, not a dream catcher. This box, once in a while, you have to open it up and bring it out to read your dream, the dreams that you want and you wish upon and you put it in here. So with that, I also say there's times that we can just lift the mask and put it aside. It's just like an armor that you wear and you can put that armor in your closet that if and when you need it, you can go and open that closet, put that armor back on. Actually, I would say instead of an armor, I give my clients, how about we have a handheld armor instead of a full-on armor that it's metal, that it's hard, it's hardcore, and there's no feeling penetrating to that. So we can have a handheld armor 
So if we need to, we can protect ourselves, shield ourselves, and fight with it. And we can also put it down. Now, I hope this makes sense because this is part of what I do. I love working with metaphors, helping you shift from one to another. Next time you see a dream catcher, ask it. Put it in your bedroom. And every night as you sleep, look at that dream catcher and say, catch my dreams and make my dreams become a reality so that as I sleep, it becomes a reality. Hopefully, we take a lot of masks when we go to bed. And I know of some of my clients who actually put more masks on. as they go to bed. And that's another self-protection. And my thing is, if you need to put a mask on to be in bed with someone, maybe it's the wrong bed. We don't have to lay in that bed if we are not comfortable with who we are or where we are or who we are with. So, if you are here, send me an emoji, write something. If this is a repeat or a replay, please share. Let me know you are visiting me on a replay. It's just give me something. Mark, you are always on the ball. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lilia. How are you? Um, one day I'm going to come and visit your dance classes. And I know you do incredible work with the kids. This is what I love. If I know the people who are coming here, if you are here, just send something. I like to introduce people. I love connecting people to one another so that if there is someone here and they need something, they can connect. And so... I, I, I love networking. I love connecting. And yes, I help my clients become better than they are, which is truly my tagline. It's Heal Within is transforming you to a better place or a better you. And that's because transformation begins with you. No one can help us be happy no one can make us anything we feel it they become the trigger they are the trigger they are the muse they are the ones who push the buttons they are the ones who may influence us to be happy to be sad to be angry but everything starts from inside it's our choice how we respond and I know you have heard all about that. So make a wish. Just put it in a place that once in a while you open it up and look at it and see if your wishes come true. And also the masks that you wear. Do it lovingly, kindly. And if I can be of help to peel away some of the masks, that no longer are necessary for you, by all means, message me, call me, email me. Come on in. We can have a free session. I'd love to explore how I can help you because that's what every, every part of this, it's uh, exactly that. It's an exploration of who we are in order to peel away the layers and then be more happy with all that we are first. And thank you for the hearts, Mark. Thank you for all of you being here. Um, I'd like to close this session with love, with a prayer. It's a simple prayer. It's a prayer that, it's not necessarily a prayer, but in remembrance of someone 
a client, a daughter of a friend who is now in God's arms, cradled in God's arms. And she was the most magical, beautiful young woman who fought a good fight. And I don't want to say she left us early because I truly believe we all leave exactly when we are supposed to go. But in her remembrance, I would like to say, God bless, God bless you all. Cherish who you are, cherish the ones you love and enjoy every single moment. Things do not matter, you do, you matter. So have an incredible, fun, exciting Halloween tomorrow. Go all out. And I thank you for being here. This is Lisa Bubari. It's Heal Talk Tuesdays. And you can always find me on YouTube under Lisa Bubari or Heal Within or even on my website. Until next week, God bless you. Enjoy life. And that was a moment of remembrance for me. Goodbye.